Well, good morning to you. This is Coffee Break. I'm Pastor Jerry Scott. It's the 19th of November, one week from Thanksgiving. I hope that you are anticipating a good holiday. You know, last night I was reading through some of the new state regulations surrounding the challenges of the surging COVID virus, and I found my heart disquieted. There were rumbles going on. He has a gathering storm of emotions. And I realized in that moment that I was reacting and not responding. It seems to me that these days an awful lot of us are emoting rather than thinking. That we are reacting instead of responding. And we know, or at least we ought to, fear and anger are not the best places to go when we want to make wise decisions, are they? Are you an emotional mess? I don't say that to judge you. I say that out of deep compassion because it is a time when our emotions are easily stirred. A lot of people are much more ready to experience their emotions than others. Yeah, but it is a fact. We all are people of emotions, aren't we? Our emotions are gifts of God. They let us feel joy. They let us grieve. They let us feel fear. They let us love, though we know love is more than emotion. But as rich as they are, we also know that it's a dangerous thing to let our emotions rule. You see, we we all know that a toddler can plummet from the giddy heights of happiness to the depths of terrible sorrow in five minutes. And we accept that because that's part of being two. But when an adult is riding that roller coaster of emotions, It's a dangerous thing for us all. So what's my point today? I do have a point. (laughs) We need to keep our faith fixed on a solid rock, Christ Jesus. For he is greater than the state of our heart at any given moment. Christian, don't reduce your faith to an experience, chasing a feeling, or even judging the reality of your salvation by whatever emotions rule your heart. You're not more saved or right with God on those days that you feel particularly serene or holy, nor are you less loved by God when your emotional life is a mess, when your inner life is turned upside down and inside out. Oh, I'm a a Pentecostal Christian. That's my my background, my training, my experience. And we value personal experience because Pentecostals believe the Holy Spirit is present, active, moving us now personally in us. So our worship includes laughter and tears. In my times of prayer, it's not uncommon for me to become so emotional that I spill over in tears even as I pray. Or I may even have a loud outburst of praise and a shout or even a hearty laugh. That's one of the ways I relate to God. But Jesus reminds us that we must love the Lord our God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, and with all of our strength, Mark chapter 12. He says that the best relationship with God is a combination of emotion and truth and passion and discipline, feelings and facts. God's love for you to underscore it is not at the emotion it is not at the mercy of your emotions. He doesn't only love you when you have those warm fuzzy feelings that might come when your favorite worship song plays or when you hear your favorite hymn. He's not more present if you find your heart broken and tearful when you are praying. He's equally God on the bad days and the good ones. He's still Lord when exhaustion has stolen your passion. He's still Lord when anxiety about the future has temporarily paralyzed your soul and quieted or even silenced your prayers. He's still God. The stress that's accompanying this COVID crisis has complicated worship and emotional, making us emotional in the worst kind of ways. If that's the case for you, acknowledge it. Set your sights higher than the state of your hearts. And as the word encourages, fix your eyes on Jesus. Let's not let ourselves fall in love with a feeling. Choose to love the truth. If we build our salvation on a special state of mind or some 
sense of emotional well-being. That's a weak, sandy foundation for our walk with God. Our hope rests on the solid rock, Christ Jesus, to repeat myself. He gives us an unchanging promise of our salvation. He connects us to our Father who is an eternal, let's use the word immutable, that is unchangeable God. He does not, James says, change like shifting shadows. Here's a word from the word as I close today. It's from the ancient revelation of the preacher named Zephaniah who reminds us the people of the Lord trust an unchanging God. Listen to these wonderful words. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17. You might even want to look it up and meditate more on it later in the day. Zephaniah says, The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17. The Lord your God is with you. He will quiet you with his love. What a wonderful truth this morning. Father God, we pause as we begin this day. I pause and I ask your presence to be close and near to us. In a time, Lord, when it's easy to become an emotional mess, either full of fear or full of anger, would you quiet our hearts? Lord, speak to us of your eternal promises. Remind us that we are children of God, beloved sons and daughters who are deeply cared for by you. Lord, I ask that you would touch my friends today. Make their lights shine bright as they live in a dark world, reflecting the glory of God and bringing praise to your name. In the name of Jesus, I ask these things. Amen. Friends, have a great day. Thanks for the opportunity of sharing yet another few moments of coffee break with you. God willing, I'll see you here tomorrow.